Hey everyone, welcome back to Five at Five, Five at Five, where we uh, study the Bible and we learn from the Bible how we can live our lives as Christians. We've been going through the book of Matthew, the Gospel of Matthew, and we are finishing up uh, this section called the Sermon on the Mount. Uh, it starts with chapter 5, 6, and now we're looking at chapter 7 as we conclude with the Sermon on the Mount. In this particular chapter, I encourage you to go through it, read it on your own. There is a series of teachings and, and wisdom that Jesus is passing on uh, to his disciples and to all the people who are gathered around him. But he talks about, in chapter 7, he talks about the, the idea of you know, don't judge others unless you are to be judged. <clears throat> Make it very clear that when we are judging others, when we hold people to a standard, that we are also under that, that same standard. That we are to ask God whatever we need. You know, we can ask him, you know, asking it will be given, knocking the door would be open. Uh, we are to treat others the way we want to be treated, the golden rule. Um, he talks about the narrow road uh, that leads to life, that we are to follow this narrow road that few follow and to avoid the broad road, the easy road that leads to destruction. Um, talking about uh, how we will know a person's true character by their fruits, by how they live their lives, their, the fruits that they produce, like we know a tree by its fruits that it produces. And he concludes all this, so the last thing he, he talks about there in chapter 7 is the parable of the sand and the rock that, uh, of uh, two different men who built their houses, one on sand and one on rock. And the one that built his house on the rock, when the storms came, it stand firm, but the one that built his house on sand crumbled. And looking at all this, you know, the real message of Jesus is simply this. He, again, you go back to chapter 5 and 6. He's, he's showing us the true sense of righteousness. That righteousness in its essence is, 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 is love to God and it's love to others. You know, it's really the summary of the law of God. It's what God desires. And so when you look at the practicalness of, of righteousness, that all that we do is really to the love of our other neighbor. What we struggle with, again, this is like, uh, uh, again, what we learn in chapter 6, what we struggle with righteousness, that sometimes we do righteous things, not because it's the right thing, the good thing to do, or we don't do it because it's out of love for another person. We do it for our own self-image, that we do certain things, uh, righteous things that seem to be acceptable among society that make us look good. Uh, or, or to earn us uh, something from God or to prove something to God that we are perfect. And, and that type of righteousness or that type of mindset leads to this attitude of self-righteousness where we puff ourselves above everyone else. True righteousness um, is really pointing others first. And we see that about not judging, about if you need something, you don't need it, get it for yourself, but God will provide. Um, it's about knowing your fruits and producing good fruits of righteousness that are giving, not taking away or selfish. Uh, and, and, and you put this all together, uh, of what we are struggling with is that it's not being righteous, it's that having the right, the pure righteousness that can only come from, from Jesus. So when we build our lives on this, when we live our lives according to the words of Jesus, we'll be like that man who built his house on a rock. Therefore, when any accusation comes your way, when you are challenged, uh, when you are confronted with any hardships you meet in life, wherever those things are, you will have that sense of integrity, that true righteousness that will keep you strong. It's the people who live self-righteously who are, are who are judging others when they are excusing themselves, when they live out good for the sake of their own self-glory rather than for the service of others. It's when people live that life, it's when they are brought to, um, when they're confronted, um, when they meet hardships or, or, or storms in life, that uh, because they haven't really built on the, on the sense, since they built it on themselves, and they meet those hardships, they will crumble and they will fall apart. Um, for example, I mean, the, too often we see this in the headlines, sadly, of, of pastors or church workers or Christians, outspoken Christians who, who give a, a, a kind of a, a presentation of being good and, and righteous people only to find out that some scandal um, happened in their life. And because of that scandal, they just crumble and, and anything that they have built up is taken away. 
Um, but thankfully, God is merciful, even for people who have, um, you know, made some bad choices and, and, and see their, their whole empire crumble. There's mercy of God and his forgiveness, because that's the rock of Jesus. It's not so much how best we live our life, because we struggle with this. Uh, the real rock of Jesus is his forgiveness and his righteousness, that alien righteousness that comes to all of us, that makes us holy and pure when we trust in him and follow Jesus. Well, thanks for joining us again for 5 at 5. Uh, again, if you have any questions, comments, topics you'd like me to raise or talk about, you can send those my way at 5 at stmichaellutheran.org. Again, that is the number 5 at stmichaellutheran.org. And remember, you've been blessed to be a blessing to others.